Hello and welcome to another Core Animator tutorial where we're going to be creating this project where we have a beautiful photograph and then we've cut out this puppet and kind of animated uh, you know an interesting blowing away in the wind effect. So let's go ahead and start that from scratch. So let's go back home and hit the plus sign. And this will be another kind of long form tutorial where I will just kind of ramble on and make the mistakes as they come. And hopefully that will be helpful as you make your own projects. So we're going to go ahead and find the photo and import it in as is. And again, we're going to kind of look at a couple of things. So this imported in at uh, scaled it down a little bit. Our canvas is by default 1500 square and our image could be larger. So let's go ahead and set our image to 100%. And we'll just make this project at kind of full quality and see what we get. Uh, there's kind of a bug right now where this isn't allowing me to go down as far as I'd like. It's probably way bigger than I need. But since we're here anyway, let's go ahead and the way to go around that bug is just, just exit out and it should be under untitled now and enter back in and then that should allow you to get your canvas the size you want. Okay, so we know that we can easily go ahead and extract a trimmed image and trim her out. Um, but that will not leave us with a clean background. So there's a couple of options you can do for a clean background. You can use your favorite image editor. So we could easily move over here to Photoshop. I think I've already done this in this one. And take the image in into Photoshop Fix or something like that. And let's see, is this not in here? All right, let's add it again and let's just look at that. So you could take it into Photoshop Fix and use the healing brush, kind of just knock out the image in your favorite image editor um, and go ahead and accept that and export that image and use that as your background. And that's fairly easy to do. We don't have image editing because we are an animation tool and we leave that to other apps to perform. But there's also, if you don't have an image editor that you like to use, there's also some other things that you could do. Let's go ahead and make a duplicate. Um, you've got, in this image, you've got quite a bit of room on the side here. So all of that is basically um, pretty good amount of the same kind of foliage. So you could put your anchor point right there, take your scale horizontal tool and just stretch it out like that. And that would kind of make it a little bit blurry, but maybe that's, it might be what you want or it might be good enough for, you know, like just a simple kind of animated video that you're, that you're working with. A couple of other options you can do is you can extract the trimming and maybe take kind of a ragged edge and do a similar thing where you put that anchor point there and you just kind of and then you only have that blurry part kind of behind your image um, where it's going to get covered up but you can see that that doesn't always work and sometimes you have to take a bunch of chunks to kind of make that work exactly how you want. So I'm going to opt for that first method and we're just going to leave that there and we're going to move that to the back and I'll lock that background image. Then I'm going to take our original and I'm going to cut out our girl. And we're going to cut out, even though I'm going to articulate the umbrella separately, um, eventually I'm going to cut it out everything together for now. And 
And that's generally what I like to do is I'm going to animate an object kind of just I kind of cut out the entire object and then I have it in my project as a layer and I can always extract as many trimmings as I want from it. So I'm not going to worry about that hole in there. There's kind of a trick you could do is if you, well, if you wanted to go get that hole you could come in like this and then just make sure you get back out to that point. A little bit tricky to do, but definitely doable. Okay, so let's finish up our umbrella. And that should work. You can already see that if we just wanted to leave it at that, we could have a pretty good effect here of, of rotating uh, around that point. Of course, we need to. We can go ahead and throw that away now. We've got our blurred kind of image in the background now, which still matches the lighting and color really well. So now we've got this this kind of initial puppet, and let's keep articulating the pieces out that we want. So let's extract trimming from that, and we will cut the umbrella out by itself. And we want the umbrella to have anchor point up there. And cut another trimming out. And we will do the girl by herself. Actually, before we do the girl, let's let's do some pieces. So let's I know that I'm gonna I wanna do her dress kind of blowing in the wind a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. That'll work okay. And then I'm going to cut another trimming out. And I want her hair to kind of blow in the wind a little bit. You'll notice that that cutout wasn't super clean, but it should match the background well enough that it really won't matter. We'll see if that'll work. Um, I'm going to have an issue with her shoes here, so maybe I'll just grab a piece and that will probably be decent enough. I can grow that and kind of just pretend that that's a you know, poor man's clone stamp. And a lot of it is just kind of knowing what you're going after if it's you know, just a simple video file that's not going to be examined too closely, then you really can get away with quite a bit of, you know, shortcuts or tricks like that, because from far away that's going to look just fine. Um, so let's see, I've got a hair, I've got a piece of the skirt. I think I want another piece of the skirt just to kind of add some more interest. Maybe I'll just do it like that or something. Let's see, where's my... So I'm going to take all these pieces I've cut out and multi-select and group those in a folder. And the entire folder I probably want anchored from here. And that's, that's where we'll swing her from. But then we want her to pivot against the umbrella, so let's see. So we'll take, oh, if we want her to swing separately from the umbrella, I need to get, we can see that this piece still has the umbrella on, so I, I forgot to go back and do that. Or did I? Anyway, we'll chop wrong way. We will extract the entire girl. Yeah, I don't think I ever did finish doing that. And then that's, we'll have her there. And we need to move her into the group. And this one we can actually throw away, but I like to just put it in the very background. So it's hidden behind the background. And if we ever need to trim more stuff, we have it available. 
But this should be our entire girl. Um, and she should, now we should be able to group the girl together inside of that. And we'll make her anchor point right there. So she can just swing just slightly independently of the umbrella. We'll make the umbrella on the very top so that we can hide that. Looks like I missed an anchor or a trimming a little bit. That looks great. Okay. So we are well on our way here. Um, I do need a drop shadow, so let's grab one. Just gonna do a drop shadow, lift that off, and drop that into my project. Maybe smush it down a bit that way. Turn down the opacity. Okay, so we are ready to animate, I think. So let's go into our animation. And let's change our ease style to ease in out. Let's try two seconds for the entire group to rotate. And we'll auto reverse loop that. Can see that's kind of fast enough. That looks great. Let's go to one second and kind of raise up. And we'll loop that. So those are kind of offset like that. That looks that looks good. And then we can go in here to the girl group by yourself. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I accidentally have that umbrella in that group. In reality, I want it just outside of the girl group. So I guess we could name these. Might make life easier. We'll call that all. And we'll call this one just the girl with her skirt and her hair and the pieces we cut out and stuff like that. All right, we'll go back into our animation. We'll try and rotate just the girl slightly separately, independently. And it looks like it's going to need the same duration. So when she gets there, we're going to do that. There we go. Now there's a little, you can tell there's a little pivot point there. That's looking pretty good. Um, for the umbrella, I think that we can, I think that, uh, well, I can see that I put the anchor point in the wrong place. So let's go back to layout. I don't need the anchor point there for the umbrella because that's, I need the all group there. For the umbrella, I'm going to probably just squish it and like that. So I'm going to put the anchor point there. So let's go in here, back to animate, and when... She's up in the air. Let's take the umbrella and let's kind of stretch it out. And when she's down, we'll take the umbrella and we'll really squish it. Well, it's exaggerated a little bit. A little cartoony, but that's okay. And now let's move to half second. Let's start animating her skirt. <clears throat> One thing I forgot to do is take this piece of the skirt and link it to this bigger skirt piece. So let's put those together. And uh, that just hold over, hover, and they'll nest together is another alternative to grouping. It does work slightly differently, and I would recommend just grouping generally, but that will, that will work for sure. Hi, baby. I could tell. It says Alex Harris when you called me. That's, that's pretty cool, baby. 
I'm doing a work project for with you right now. The flying umbrella picture. All right, love you. That's working. Bye. All right, and let's see. So. Start rotating. Kind of see how far we can get away with. And let's loop that. And we may just want to make sure it's scaled a little bit to cover. can scale in the different directions, offset them a little bit. Maybe that's a little too fast, but that's all right. We'll call that good. And then we'll take this piece here and we'll scale and rotate that separately and auto loop those. See what we get. We get kind of a nice effect. That's looking good. Now we've got our hair piece. We can zoom in. And maybe we'll do that at 0.75. And we're definitely going to scale that. Probably scale it in the X as well, just to give it a little variation. Loop all those and see where that gets us. Whoops, didn't want to do that. So a lot of times when you're zoomed in and you have a selection, but you, you can't really tell, there's a couple of ways you can get you can unselect, you just select there. If you have any blank space in the canvas, you can always double tap in there and then you can kind of zoom back. So let's see. Looks like that hair needs to move a little faster probably. Let's go back in. Looks pretty good. So maybe the last thing we should look at is our drop shadow. And let's position it here. Two seconds, we're going to just move it horizontally over to there. And as she's always up higher in the middle, so let's go to one second. Uh, we want it to, to be less opacity here but then we want it to be the same opacity at two seconds. So let's go ahead to go to two seconds, swipe over and stamp an opacity keyframe. That way we get the exact same value. Now we have the same value at the beginning and the end. And then in the middle, we can just change and then we can just loop that. That was silly. You could also do that much easier by not worrying about making that explicit keyframe and just changing it here and auto reversing your loop, just like we've been doing, and that will work great. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Pretty close to what our example was. Um, I think one of the last things is adding some text. Blustery day, let's make that white. I think the only cursive font we have is Savoy right now. We'll make the fonts, oh, let's see. It's already scaled to 33%, so we've got quite a bit of headroom. If we don't want to scale the font, well, let's just, let's just be safe and we'll make it huge. And then we've got plenty of room to make sure it's hundred percent and then let's sort that below our girl and voila looks pretty good looks like we've got an error here something's happening oh with the drop shadow so let's check that out Tap on the drop shadow and we find that we did not auto reverse that loop. So we've got our skirt flapping, our hair flapping, the scaling, and the shadow working pretty well. 
Uh, we weren't super careful when we cut out the umbrella, so we can see that that kind of foliage shows up. A couple of solutions we could do. We could have cut it out better, obviously. Or we can go ahead and unlock this background image and maybe scale it up just a titch so that that umbrella always stays behind some amount of foliage. And of foliage, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> anyway, that'll hide that edge. And... That looks pretty good. So hopefully this was helpful. You can see there's a couple of ways that you can knock out a background, um, kind of some quick ways and some, you know, more using an image editor ways. Um, and then just adding a simple animation adds quite a bit. All right, thanks for watching.